Ever since 1852, when British surveyors discovered that a massive peak in the inner reaches of the Himalaya was the world's highest mountain, people have dreamed of climbing Mount Everest. From the first attempts to reach the 29,028 foot summit, it had been the British who often made the strongest push for the conquest and who suffered the most notable tragedies. In 1924, Mallory and Irvine were lost in clouds just a few hundred feet from the top. In 1934, Morris Wilson disappeared on a quixotic solo attempt, and the loss of 11 porters and sherpas on other expeditions tainted the glory of adventure. In 1952, Swiss climber Raymond Lambert and the Sherpa Tenzing Bhotia came within 800 feet of the summit. The British knew that 1953 must be the year Everest was climbed, or another nation's flag would be planted on the third pole. Under the leadership of Colonel John Hunt, an army officer and experienced mountaineer, they mounted a strong, well-organized expedition with the single-minded goal of getting the team safely to the top. Among its members were two New Zealanders, schoolteacher Greg Low. And a beekeeper from Auckland, Edmund Hillary. Hillary had begun serious climbing only seven years before, learning the ropes on New Zealand's highest peak, Mount Cook. In 1951, he had visited Nepal, and almost by accident joined with a British reconnaissance of Mount Everest. It was his proven ice climbing skills that earned him a spot on the 1953 British expedition. In the pool, Tenzing Bhotia, also known as Tenzing Norgay, was added to the team. Not only as sirdar for the porters and sherpas that accompanied the expedition, but as a climber in his own right. For Tenzing, this was to be his seventh expedition to Everest, more than any man alive. Do you think it'll ever be climbed? They asked me, and I answered, "Nothing is impossible for a man. If he tries, he may one day succeed." And then they said, "But aren't you afraid to climb it? It is the home of gods and demons." And to this I answered, "I am not afraid to die. Walking on a road, you can easily meet with an accident. So why should I be afraid on a mountain?" The twelve-member British expedition arrived in Nepal on March 8, and by the end of the month, they had moved their gear to Teng Bochi, the monastery at 12,600 feet on the Everest approach. They began their assault on the mountain with reconnaissance forays to the dangerous Kumbu Icefall. The icefall is a 2,000-foot-high maze of crevices and seracs, constantly shifting, never reliable, a major obstacle to success. Picking a route through it was left to the expedition's expert ice climbing team, New Zealanders Hillary and Low. I think I'm a person of. Of very uh, modest abilities,、um, I think I have quite a lot of motivation in, in things that I、uh, undertake. But I don't regard myself as a hero at all. <clears throat> I'm petrified most of the time. By May seven, the base camp at eighteen thousand feet had been established, and several higher camps had been supplied to support the efforts of the summit teams. Colonel Hunt chose two teams. The first of Deputy Leader Charles Evans and Tom Bordillon, and the second of Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay. Evans and Bordillon left for the summit on May 26, leaving a nervous camp behind. While they were gone, the rest of the group made final checks on their expedition equipment. By this time, nearly three months after they arrived in Nepal, supplies were running low. That afternoon, Evans and Bordillon reached 28,750 feet, less than 300 feet from their goal. But their oxygen tanks were giving them trouble, and the hour was late, so they had to turn back. That left it up to Hillary and Tenzing. And early on May 29, from a high camp at 28,000 feet, they began the last leg of a long journey. We look up for weeks, for months. That is all we have done. Look up. Only it is different now. So near, so close, 
only a little more than a thousand feet above us. It is no longer a dream, a high dream in the sky, but a real and solid thing, a thing of rock and snow that men can climb. We will climb it. By 9 a.m., the two reached the south summit. All that remained was a final ridge, a dangerous knife edge of rock and ice hanging 10,000 feet above the Kangsheng Glacier. Halfway along this ridge, they came to a 40-foot step that could not be worked around. It had to be climbed. But then I noticed on the right there was a, um, a narrow crack where the, the ice on the east face of the mountain was breaking away uh, from the rock. So I wriggled inside it and then wriggled and jammed my way up this crack and finally uh, out uh, onto the top of the actual rock step. And then as I lay there panting, for the first time, I was really convinced uh, we were going to get to the top. At 11.30 on the morning of May 29, 1953, the last ridge fell away, and views never before seen were witnessed by two men, Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay, from the top of Mount Everest. Hillary turned to Tenzing to shake hands but that wasn't good enough for the accelerated Sherpa. He threw his arms around my shoulders, and I threw my arms around his shoulders, and we had a good little hug on, on top of the mountain. Only when the two reached Camp 8 in the South Col did the impact of their achievement begin to gain momentum. In typical fashion, Hillary's own announcement to fellow New Zealander George Lowe was brusque and to the point. Well, George, we knocked the bastard off. The coronation of Queen Elizabeth was only three days off. And before satellite hookups, it seemed impossible to relay news of their success to London in such a short time. But James Morris, the correspondent for the London Times, devised a code to be wired from the Sherpa village of Namcha Bazaar. The news reached London on the morning of the coronation. the BBC home service. Here is the news. Mount Everest has been conquered by members of the British expedition. The news reached London in a message to the Times from Colonel H.C.J. Hunt, the expedition's leader. It said that Mr. E.P. Hillary, a New Zealander, and Tenzing Bhutia, a Sherpa, had reached the summit last Friday, May 29th. Message added, all is well. Both men continued to lead active lives. Tenzing was hailed as a hero throughout Asia and became the director of the Himalayan Mountain Institute in Darjeeling, training others who wanted to follow his footsteps onto the summit of Everest. Tenzing Norgay, the tiger of the snows, died in 1986. To travel, to experience and learn, that is to live. The world is wide and you cannot see all of it even from the top of Everest. And Ed Hillary Beekeeper became Sir Edmund Hillary. He too continued to climb and explore. More significantly, he became a founder of the Himalayan Trust, which provides for schools and hospitals in the mountain villages of Nepal. In the succeeding years, Everest has been climbed many times. In 1956 by the Swiss, in 1960 by the Chinese, and in 1963 by an American team. The first woman to reach the summit, Junko Tabai of Japan, did so in 1975. But the achievement of Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay remains untarnished, like Lindbergh's flight across the Atlantic or Neil Armstrong's footsteps on the moon, for they were the first.